Now, the idea of this channel is not to be heavy. In fact, complete opposite, really. I want this to be a place you can come and hopefully have a little bit of a giggle, a bit of a laugh. Maybe just go away from the channel being a little bit happier than you were when you when you logged on. But I can't escape kind of reporting this to you. I'm currently at Beachy Head. And as everyone knows in the UK, Beachy Head has a pretty notorious reputation. In fact, I think it's the second most... Um, has the, or has this horrible track record of being the second most popular place, can you say that, uh, for suicide. So people come here from all over the country um, and end their lives. So I was walking along the cliffs um, to take some photographs, actually, which I'm having a look at now and just working on. And they're amazing f photographs, even though I say to myself. A beautiful sunset tonight. The whole of the coast there with the chalk cliffs were just lit up by this glowing red sunset. It was it was beautiful. But you can't help escape feeling that this is a very melancholy place. There's something very spiritual and powerful about it. And I'm not a... Well, I don't tend to think I'm a particularly... Well, I'm not particularly religious and I'm, I don't think I'm... Uh, particularly spiritual um, but on the other hand I have to say that this place has affected me it really has it's it's both beautiful and, and haunting at the same time uh, I recommend absolutely that you you come and if you can come and visit here and just take in the scenery and and maybe just it's a it's a place that makes you think very very hard I have to say I'm I've come back from maybe two or three hours walking the cliffs, along the cliff line. Uh, it's pretty scary, obviously. It's very steep, um, sheer drops, so you have to be careful. But I've come back to the van and I'm just so happy to be here and, and lucky and appreciative, I think. I think that's what it does. It makes you feel appreciative that, you know, that you, you, you're not that person that was so ill, so so distraught that they couldn't think of any other option than to come here to beat your head and end their lives. Heavy, isn't it? I don't mean to be heavy. Um, I just thought I should let it out. So I have. Back to the photos. So I spent the night here in the car park of the Beachy Head Hotel. Fantastic place to come. Very motorhome and camper van friendly. All you need to do, as always, is offer to buy a meal or have a drink here and... They are extremely accommodating if they've got the room, of course. Right next door is the headquarters of the Beachy Head Chaplaincy Team. They're an amazing search and rescue charity run by chaplains who are all members of local churches and who patrol the area in car and on foot, looking out for people that might need someone to talk to. So after a surprisingly emotional day, it was time to get some sleep. But not before I performed a little van life hack that I talked about in episode one. Morning everyone. It's about five o'clock in the morning. I'm being quiet because I'm parked up here in a car park outside the Beachy Head Hotel. And there are a few other camper vans here, so out of respect for them, I'm sure they don't want to be up at five o'clock in the morning, but why am I? Well, the idea is that I'm going to walk about a mile from here down to Cow Gap, which is a apparently pretty popular way to get onto the beach and from there I'll be able to take hopefully a really good sunrise view of the Beachhead Lighthouse so that's the plan anyway and then after that I've got about half an hour till sunrise and then after that I'm going to come back here uh, and make a cup of tea it was about a 30 minute walk down to the beach and I had to get a move on because the sun was coming up, but it was well worth it for these amazing views. So it's about a few minutes before the sun is due to rise. I don't know if you can see it just over my shoulder there. We've got Eastbourne in the distance there. I'm gonna be popping on there a little bit later on, I think for breakfast. But it's just one of those moments that again, I feel I kind of need to remind myself about and that is that moment at about 4.30 you know the sun's coming up in an hour you're in bed duvet's on top of you you're nice and warm and you think 
Do you know what? I'm going to stay here. And it's so tempting to do that, but every time I get out, every time I come and see a sunrise like this, it's worth it. So I've got to remind myself that it's worth it because it, it really is. There's no better way to start off a day than to watch the sun come up. It kind of gives you, kind of gives you a little bit of hope, really, that today is going to be a fantastic day. The meandering chalk pathway that's cut into the cliff face eventually takes you all the way down to Cow Gap. So. We made it, pretty steep. I'm at Cow Gap, as you can see, onto the beach now. Hopefully it's just a short walk around a little bit of chalky headland and then I should be able to see the beachy head lighthouse in all its splendor on this fantastic morning. Uh, just a quick reminder, when you're walking on the beach here, it does actually get cut off by the tide. So you do have to be pretty careful. Check the time tides, I've checked mine and today actually I'm really lucky the tide's pretty low and it's on its way out so I've got plenty of time before I get into any trouble so nothing else for it let's uh, crack on whoa it's windy I made it can you see it oh, hang on there it is beachy head lighthouse quite a walk it's not that far but you have to remember it's a real kind of ankle breaker there's lots of boulders and wet slippery rocks obviously as the tide goes out so you have to take care the other thing you need to do they recommend you can see the um if you see the cliffs up here they're really sheer and you can see big chunks of them where they've fallen down the side of the cliff face and smashed on the bottom so I do recommend that you walk at least 10 meters away from the cliff face itself. By now I was absolutely starving so it was back up the hill, back to the van and a short drive into Eastbourne to grab some breakfast. It's not every day you see a ferris wheel outside your van door. Eastbourne claims to be the sunniest place in the entire UK and judging by the weather when I was there who am I to argue? There's certainly a sense of the Costa Dells here with plenty of places to dine outside in the sunshine. Oh, I do like a nice glass of wine with my fish and chips. If you come to Eastbourne, you must visit the 19th century 300 meter long Eastbourne Pier. Although as you can see, I got there very early and it wasn't open yet. But one thing that was just opening up was Eastbourne's seafront marketplace, where you can buy everything from freshly baked bread and local cheeses to paella and spicy Mexican burritos. You know, some people call Eastbourne God's waiting room because of the age of a lot of the residents that live here. But you know what, on a day like today, I don't mind waiting here at all. So that's it from me here in sunny Eastbourne. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want to see more episodes like this, then please kind of remind you to hit that subscribe button for me. It makes a huge difference. It means I'll be able to carry on this odyssey of eating and drinking my way across the UK. So until we see each other next time, remember to stay safe, stay crafty.